This Vegeta's way, way better at pitting two foes against each other. Just watch. What's up everybody, Stevdez here, and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Days. Vegeta, the last of the Saiyan royal family. The last of a dying brood of Saiyans poised to rule the galaxy after eventually realizing the legend of Super Saiyan and defeating the emperor that once rose above them, once and for all. A proud warrior that strives to even topple the god of destruction with his power. With a rival in Son Goku, this man has surpassed many limits thought to be impossible by the likes of any mere mortal. Warrior, father, pride, Saiyan, and prince. All words that describe the anti-hero turned hero of the Dragon Ball franchise. All of these words reflect in that stare of a brilliant and fearsome warrior of the Saiyan race. So what if he was a chick? In the last part, Goku and female Vegeta both achieved Super Saiyan at the same time, curb stomped Frieza, and then proceeded to duel on planet Namek, accidentally going a little far and causing the planet's destruction. However, Vegeta wasn't going to allow her rival Goku to die there, so she helps him out, and now they are in healing pods in Frieza's flagship. The ship was able to take off without being destroyed on Namek, however, they don't exactly know where they're going. But before we get to them, I think it would be important to go to Earth and make sure we cover one of the most important sagas ever in Dragon Ball Z, the Garlic Jr. Saga. So let's get right into part eight of What If Vegeta Was Born Female. We'll start out at the scene where everybody's wished back to life and the Namekian Dragon Balls, as well as the rest of the Namekians, are wished to New Namek. Tarbo would be offered a place to stay by Bulma because, well, He's got a good mind on his shoulders, and Bulma wants to take advantage of that. Space technology and all the different advancements that the Frieza forces could very well have been replicating on Earth through a Saiyan that's smart enough to remember exactly how all the systems work? Yes, please. It would be around this time Bulma and Yamcha would break up, and she'd be single for a little while. But eventually, that interested mind of the Prince of Saiyans, plus the training regimen, Tarbell isn't going to not train, he is a Saiyan after all, would get her attention. At first, the greedy woman would just want to date him for what's in here in order to make stuff in here, but eventually, his honorable Saiyan Prince persona kinda gets something in here. But as I said, Tarbo would train like Vegeta in canon. You know, the gravity training, high intensity. He would make it up to about 250 times Earth's normal gravity by the time the Garlic Jr. Saga kicks off. Why such a big leap in a matter of months, Stevdez? Well, honestly, he heard the story from Gohan. How his father and Vegeta turned into these golden warriors and were able to take out Frieza? Gohan would have been there for that. It may not be a big part of him and he can shrug off that kind of pride, but Tarbo, still being the Prince of All Saiyans, is a little bit bothered at the fact that he wasn't the one to turn Super Saiyan. It was a low-class warrior and sure, the makings of a Super Saiyan was in his sister, but that doesn't change the fact that she was not destined for greatness. He was. At the same time, he's not as rash as our canon Vegeta is. So, like I said, he can shake off the pride thing from being too much. But he's still going to train a lot. That being said, Tarbo's not going to be as powerful as canon Vegeta at this point. I would say a good old Garlic Jr. Saga should be able to boost him up to that level. He may be training at 250 times Earth's gravity, but he's not a Super Saiyan. Thanks to the gravity chamber being pretty airtight, he isn't affected by the Blackwater Mist. 
However, he does get into Capsule Corp, wondering where everybody is, because Capsule Corp is oddly quiet, and that's when a corrupted Dr. Briefs kind of sinks his teeth into his shoulder. Ooh, he's going to feel that for a bit. Tarbell leaves, absolutely bewildered as to why so many Earthlings are starting to attack him. He needs some answers, and that is when he senses Krillin and Gohan's key going off against Mustard and Salt. On the way, he pops by Korin's, realizes they're corrupt as well, and steals a couple Sensu Beans. They're probably gonna need those. Tarbell arrives just as Krillin is knocked down and pretty much out of commission, but thanks to him being there, Gohan doesn't get the rage boost and outright kill Mustard and Salt. Instead, Tarbell's there, and Gohan and Tarbell take care of Mustard and Salt once and for all. He then gives the two Sensu Beans to his compatriots and turns to Garlic Jr. At first, he has a confidence stare because he's been training a lot. This is the perfect test run. That is, until he starts feeling a pain right here in his lungs, right in towards his heart, and it's starting to go up towards his brain. Yeah, the Blackwater Mist is starting to affect him. Ah, I see. <laughs> it seems he was touched by the Blackwater Mist after all. Don't fight it. Come now. Be a good servant. Tarbo! Don't listen to him! Just give in. Obey your new masters. With one quick action, Tarbell launches a Gallic gun that splits in the middle and takes out Vingar and... Spice. I can't really be creative with a name like Spice. This prompts Garlic Jr.'s monstrous transformation as the Machia Star is a lot closer. However, this also prompts Piccolo to take action. And thanks to Garlic Jr. being distracted by Tarbell, Piccolo is able to free Kami and Popo. Kami and Popo go to purify Earth just as Piccolo, Krillin, and Gohan are heading up against Garlic Jr. Until Tarbell shows up! That's not a good thing, is it? Tarbell at this point is fully corrupted by the Blackwater Mist and he goes up against Piccolo. Suffice it to say, Gohan and Krillin do not have the strength to handle Garlic Jr. on their own. While Piccolo is fighting Tarbell, he's trying to get Tarbell to see that he's gonna be killing everybody by doing this. Eventually, the Earth gets purified underneath the lookout, but Tarbell's still corrupt on top of the lookout. This is where Garlic Jr. does what the idiot did in canon and opens up the dead zone. Gohan does his barrier, but without Tarbell in it. And Tarbell's thanks to his gravity training, is able to keep himself standing, even with the dead zone sucking in whatever it can with such a great force. He's glaring at the shield and launching blast after blast, trying to break it down. Tarbo! Stop! Yeah, come on! We're your friends! That's it! Destroy them! Send them to oblivion for the new emperor of this world! This makes Tarbell stop in place, seeing the horrified faces of his former compatriots and hearing the word Emperor. The looks on their faces he's able to compare to the faces that were there and then destroyed by Frieza several times in the past. Meanwhile, the word Emperor, that doesn't sit well with him. What did you just call yourself? I am your emperor, slave! You will obey! Now destroy them! Tarbell then turns to Garlic Jr., a look in his eyes that pretty much says you're boned. I refuse! I refuse to bow to another evil, pompous, overzealous, cruel, and heartless ruler such as you. Then you'll die like the rest of them! Ah! In this moment, Tarbell flashes pseudo Super Saiyan. Not quite Super Saiyan, but like what we saw Goku do in the Lord Slug movie, and launch Garlic Jr. into the dead zone. Naturally, 
I don't think Garlic Jr. can stand up to even a pseudo Super Saiyan if we're talking about roughly even 25% of a multiplier. However, afterwards, Tarble does hold that power for a bit, and he's still touched by the Blackwater Mist, turning around, glaring at Gohan and company, marching a few steps, then finally, his body does give out as he falls forward in the dust. Popo, Kami, and everybody else are able to thank him and cure him of the Blackwater Mist. After all said and done, Earth returns to peace. Meanwhile, in space, Goku and Vegeta had been traveling for a good little while, and Goku had just finished recovering in the pod. Vegeta was on the bridge, trying to figure out where this ship was going. In that time, though, she decided to leave him a suit of armor and a couple of rations, just to be sure that he was all right because they have no idea where they're going, and she might have to put aside her pride again in order to work with him. Goku regroups with Vegeta, and asks her where they're going. <sighs> We're going to his father's planet. Frieza's dad? King Cold, yes. As far as I know, though, I don't think he's aware of my betrayal. We could end this at the source, Kakarot, once and for all. No, Vegeta. Vegeta is shocked by this. What do you mean, no? This empire is responsible for so many lives being taken. The Saiyan race had dwindled to a handful be because of Frieza. We dealt with him. This isn't King Cold's doing. Damn it, Kakarot. He will come to Earth eventually. Do you not realize that? And I'll deal with him then. He's done nothing wrong to deserve this, Vegeta. Revenge is never the answer. Fine. I'll do it myself. You can just... Find a pod and leave. You're going alone? I have to. Before Frieza, King Cold enslaved several peoples. I must be sure that he knows that the last of the Saiyans are not to be trifled with. Before arriving, Goku and Vegeta do have a full day to mow it over. Vegeta's mind is set, but Goku can't see his new rival go it alone just in case she doesn't come back. Plus, what would Tarbul think? About an hour from landing, Goku approaches Vegeta and tells her that he's in on the grounds that they don't kill King Cold. Vegeta accepts this, secretly being ready to off the good king, but she doesn't tell him that. Vegeta does have a plan to go Super Saiyan and that being the call to Goku to join her. Goku then asks about the soldiers because there's probably going to be a lot on that planet and Vegeta just smirks. Oh. Don't worry about the small fry, Kakarot. Worry about the big fish. Vegeta's plan goes relatively well, being able to shake off the escorts personally as she heads into the palace that King Cold has set up for himself on this planet. It's not actually the Frieza planet homeworld, let's establish that, but it is one of King Cold's favorite summer homes if summer's a thing this deep in the universe. Vegeta conveniently takes a detour through a communications hub. She dispatches of everybody in the room relatively effortlessly and relatively quietly and relatively quickly. She then puts on a headset and makes a call to someone. Someone who's going to owe her before long. Afterwards, she heads to King Cold's throne room and bows before the king. Well, 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 Vegeta. What an interesting surprise to see you so obedient. I'm here to report to you about Frieza's fate. Oh? And what is it that you know that we do not? He was killed, my dear king. This shocks Cold to his core, and makes sense. Frieza hasn't been showing up, and that is his ship. But then he really mows it over, and he gets a laugh out of it. Clearly Vegeta being a jester here, nobody can really kill Frieza. You say he died? How then? Nothing could have killed Frieza. Not nothing called me. For I am the legendary Super Saiyan. King Cold then launches a finger beam at Vegeta, annoyed by this, who just reflects it. No problem. You're lying. Nobody could have killed Frieza. Not at all, Cold. You're next. 
The initial fight without Vegeta going Super Saiyan doesn't last too long, as ships are heard outside and soldiers are heard blasting and dying. What is happening out there? What did you do? Oh, I didn't do anything, King Cold. All I did was call in some support from the Galactic Patrol. I will murder you for this insolence! Vegeta catches King Cold's fist, then, in his face, turns Super Saiyan. You'll die trying. She then punches him through the wall and chases him, punches him again, chases him, punches him again, until he's several hundred miles away from this city or this establishment he's established. In a wasteland, King Cold returns the fight and actually turns into his third form to keep up with Super Saiyan. By the time Goku gets there, he's resorted to his final form, the one that Cooler has. What? Who is this man? My name is Goku! Vegeta and I killed Frieza and Namek! Another Saiyan! I will finish you both as my son could not! However, King Cold is rendered to the ground, very weak, and falling out of that form, turning into the final form that Frieza had. With two Super Saiyans, the King is just overpowered, and at the end, he looks up. Vegeta above him, and a ball of energy glowing in her hand just over his face. It's time to pay for what you've done to generations of Saiyans. And when you see Frieza, tell him I said hi. As you both burn in hell. He's beaten! You don't have to kill him. Revenge is never the answer. Vegeta sighs, and then grabs King Cold's armor, picking him up and glaring into his face. If you so much as breathe in my vicinity, I will not hesitate to send you to the same hell your son is burning in right now. I better have made myself clear. Vegeta tosses King Cold aside and glares at Goku. Let's go, Kakarot, before I change my mind. They leave, heading to where several escape pods are in fact leaving. Goku and Vegeta naturally bashing a few guards aside so that they can get a couple under their belts. The way I would write this is Goku is just mashing buttons trying to figure out a way to get back to Earth. Vegeta wasn't going to share that information, but Vegeta does know how to get back to Earth and she's probably going to do so. Or does she? This next part I'm leaving up to you. Does Vegeta program her pod to follow Goku's? On one hand, Vegeta wouldn't want Goku to surpass her. On the other hand, she does have to look forward to gravity training with Tarbol when she gets to Earth. You know, him keeping his promise from two parts ago. I want you to tell me by voting in that poll above and leave a comment below because I want to know why you voted for what you did. For more what-ifs in the realm of video gaming and Dragon Ball alike, such as if Bardock actually made it to Earth to try to rescue Kakarot, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video if you enjoyed it, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao.